Well, good morning, Vineyard. Good morning, Highlands. Good morning, everybody watching online. Excited that you're here. We've got a great message planned for you this morning. But before I talk about the message, I want to talk to the people at the Wheeling campus. Go to the Highlands. Just go to the Highlands. Go to the Highlands. Go to the Highlands. We got. Um, we need your seat. Um, and it's not because we don't love you here at the Wheeling campus. We are one church in two locations, and uh, we have more seats up there, and we need some more seats down here so people who are finding God can continue to find and follow God, and if there's no seats, they can't get in the door. So if you can help out with that, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to keep saying it over and over and over again until you realize I'm talking to you, um, but it's an easy way to help people find and follow God is just by attending the 10 o'clock service at the Highlands, uh, at the movie theater. It's an awesome way to do church. So, and we love our folks at the Highlands. Woohoo, guys. Love you guys. Um, yeah, so that's that. So, we're in this new sermon series uh, called Growing Faith, and we're talking about the fact that God wants to grow your faith. In fact, probably more than anything else that God wants to do in your life, He wants to grow your faith. He wants you to have an uncommon uh, over-the-top trust in him. And the reason he wants that for your life is because all good relationships are built on trust. And what God wants with you more than anything is an over-the-top, great, trusting relationship between you and your heavenly Father. Big faith is the key to a healthy relationship. And big faith is just another way to say big trust or big confidence. And so, we're unpacking as we go through this series some of the things that God uses consistently to grow our faith. And there, last week we identified five things that God uses consistently to grow our faith. The first one is this. It shows up in every story I've ever heard and certainly shows up in mine, and that is providential relationships. That, and when you listen to somebody who has a faith talking about their faith journey and their story, there's always a point in the story where they say, and then this person came into my life, or that person invited me to go to a Bible study. Uh, there's always somebody else involved, and usually several somebody else's involved. There's usually also practical biblical teaching. That's the second thing that God uses to grow our faith that they ended up in a church or a Bible study or somewhere where people were open to God's Word and taught it in a way that they could not only understand it, which was revolutionary, but also taught it in a way that they could apply it to their life. And when they begin to apply um, these principles and when they begin to apply what Jesus taught to their life and live it out, they see God come through and they see their faith grow as they, as they watch God come through. The third thing is this, private disciplines. Private discipline, so I, I learned how to pray. I learned how to talk to God beyond just memorized prayers and, you know, God is good, God is great, but I learned how to just have a conversation with God. I learned how to read the Bible. Uh, and as I began to have these private practices, these private disciplines, um, God starts speaking to them and their faith comes alive. Something else that we see most of the time is personal ministry. I began to serve using the gifts that God has given me to serve other people and to serve him. And when we step out and do that, what we see consistently is that God shows up and works through us, and that's a faith builder. Um, and the fourth, or the fifth thing is this, pivotal circumstances. Usually there's a life-defining moment or several life-defining moments where something happens. It could be a really good thing, it could be a really bad thing, but it sends you off in a direction. It could have gone anyway. Uh, either way, but it goes towards God, and it causes you to draw near to Him. And oftentimes, those are hard situations that we face in life. Sometimes they're really good situations, but there are pivotal circumstances that God uses to grow our faith, pull us near to Him, and we get to see Him come through in the midst of them, and that causes our faith to get big and to grow. This week, what we're going to talk about specifically is providential relationships, and providential relationships are very cool, uh, and like I said, a part of almost every story that you'll hear. But here's the thing with providential relationships. You can't make them happen, or can you? Turn to the person, turn to, turn to the person behind you or in front of you. Go ahead. Now, I want you to, to ask them, would you be in a providential relationship with me? Go ahead. How'd that feel? 
A little awkward, huh? Yeah, because that's not how this happens. God sets these things up. But my guess is, if you're here, you're in one of two camps. Either you're a person of faith, and there are one or two or three people in your life who have influenced your faith and caused your faith to grow, or you are a person who is investigating faith, you have some interest in faith, and you're here to learn more. Really glad you're here. Keep coming back. And, uh, and someone, though, someone intersected your life and sparked your interest in finding out more about faith. And so here's what I want you to do. Turn back to the person behind you or in front of you, whoever you were talking to, and, and tell the story of who has caused your faith to grow, or if you're just investigating faith, who has sparked your interest in faith. Go ahead. Well, for me, it was, um, I've got a whole list of people, but there, there was, when I was in high school, there was a guy uh, by the name of Tim Gooley who invested in my life. He invited me to a Bible study at his house. He hung out with high school kids, and he saw something in me, invited me to come and spend time with his family, invited me to a Bible study, and, and uh, influenced my life in such a way that I, I would say I would not be a pastor today if Tim hadn't invested in my life, if our lives hadn't have intersected. He Im impacted my life that much. He was a friend to me. He was a mentor to me. Uh, he made, uh, in some ways, my faith come alive. He was that influence in my life. When I got to college, there was a guy named Ron, and he was a pastor. And uh, Ron and I would get together almost every week and hang out and talk and eat, and, and he'd share what was going on in his world, and I'd share what was going on in my college world and ask him for advice. And, and he informally mentored me, and, and, and my faith grew in the midst of that relationship. And I can think of another guy, his name's Bill, and Bill was a, a, a naturalist. He taught uh, nature studies, and he was an, a photographer. And, uh, and in that realm, believers, you know, that's m mostly a, a, an atheistic uh, profession, um, and uh, not an atheistic profession, but most folks in that profession are, 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 uh, are, are more like evolutionary, atheist-type people, and Bill was like a, a, a Christian um, creationist in the midst of that world and had the respect. He was so good at what he did, and he loved people so well that he had the respect of all the people that he worked with, regardless of the fact that he didn't believe what they believed and what was typically almost required to believe in that realm. And I watched Bill navigate in his world, and it grew my faith because it inspired me to want to be that wherever I was. And then I can point to a handful of times in my life where I was, it was just, you know, those dark moments in life where it was just like right on the edge of depression or just processing some hard things, and there were people that God brought into my life. I can think back to right when I got out of college, my friend Jeff and Craig um, just walked with me through, encouraged me. They were strength for me when I needed strength. They believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. And I can think of a handful of other times in my life where God brought people into my life who, who helped me, encouraged me, challenged me, believed in me when I didn't believe in myself, and whose faith I could lean into when my faith was struggling in the midst of those hard, hard times. But here's what I know. Over and over and over again, what we hear when we talk to people who have faith is, I met this girl or guy, I got involved in this Bible study, I had somebody in my life, a professor in my life who was really smart and, and, and I really respected and they influenced my faith and caused my faith to grow, or I had a boss who just lived differently around the water cooler than everybody else and it turned out he was a Christian and he invited me to church and it changed the trajectory of my life, but there's always somebody in the mix. And it might be one conversation, it could be a series of conversations, it could be their life lived out close enough to you that it, and it inspired you towards faith, it could be an, invita an invitation to come to church that ended up changing your life. But here's what I know, relationships are powerful. Relationships are powerful. And God uses relationships to grow our faith in him. God uses our relationships to grow our faith in him. 
Say that with me. God uses our relationships to grow our faith in him. And when relationships intersect with our faith, big things happen. Now, here's the the other side of that. Big things can happen for good or for bad because the opposite is true. As much as people can inspire us and encourage us and, and, and point us in the right direction, they can also undermine our faith. When I was in high school, there was a a, a new teacher at the school that I was going to was a biology teacher, and we became friends. Um, and he was a he was a evangelistic atheist. His goal was to undermine the faith of anybody in his classes who had faith. And uh, and he would and, and we actually I was a Christian, uh, and we actually became friends. I liked him. Uh, But what I found was that my faith grew weaker in that season because he was constantly undermining my faith. Now, thankfully, I had other friends who were closer who were building my faith up at the same time, which is so important. I'm not suggesting we don't have friends who don't believe like we believe. In fact, I think we should. But we need to have more friends, and we need to have closer friends who build our faith in the right direction so that we can withstand those kinds of relationships. When I was in college, my roommate, who was a Christian, uh, made the decision to pledge uh, the biggest party fraternity on campus. And he took on 50 new friends. And I watched over the course of, of that semester as those friendships undermined his faith and he made horrible decisions, did things he never thought he would do, and ended up in places he never thought he would end up and further from God than when he started. And it all comes back to friendships. So and let me ask you this, who in your life has undermined your faith? Or maybe there's somebody undermining your faith right now, causing you to believe less, causing you to, to move further from God. Relationships have the power to undermine faith. They do, just as they have the power to accelerate and grow faith. Some of our biggest regrets are tied to relationships, aren't they? Some, someone you wish you, you hadn't called back, someone you wish you hadn't dated, maybe a, maybe a business partner you, you probably knew better and shouldn't have gone into business with, but you did, and now you look back and it, it just caused all kinds of pain and led you down a road you didn't want to go down. God will use relationships in our lives to build faith, but our relationships can undermine our faith as well. We have to be intentional in this arena. So what do we do with this? We can't create providential relationships, but we can leverage this principle, and that's what I want to talk about in the rest of our time. If there's a leverage point in a relationship You don't want to miss it. If there's a relationship that God is setting you up in that he wants to use to grow your faith, you don't want to miss it. That's what God does. He sets us up for providential relationships, and we have the choice to walk into them or not. You know, so that person who keeps saying, hey, let's get together, stop putting it off. That person who keeps inviting you to church, well, obviously you're here, so so you stop putting it off. That's good. Or... That person who wants to spend time with you, and you keep putting it off. Stop putting it off. Spend the time with people who will cause your faith to grow. If God uses relationships to build greater faith, then leverage that. Leverage that. And he certainly does. And we certainly become like the people that we spend time with, don't we? So pick well. In Proverbs 13, verse 20, it says this, Walk with with the wise and become Wise. Walk with the wise and become wise. This, isn't, this is uh, Solomon, King Solomon writing, and, and this is not a command to walk with the wise. This is just an observation. When we walk with wise people, we become like wise people. We become like the people we walk with. For a companion of fools suffers harm. You hang out with fools, you're going to be a fool, and foolishness leads to, to pain and harm. Now, in the Old Testament, and specifically in the wisdom writing in the Proverbs, Wisdom is directly associated with knowing, fearing, and following God. You want to be wise, fear God. Wisdom begins with, the, with, with knowing, fearing, and following God. And this idea that we will become like the people that we hang out with, we hang out with godly people, we will become godly. God grows our faith that way time and time again. 
And you know, and you know this is true. I mean, you hang out with, with people, you become like the people you hang out with over time. We tell our, we tell our teenagers this all the time. You know, your friends are going to influence your life. They're going to de- determine where you, you end up. The people you surround yourself with will impact your life. And not just, not just in decisions, but spiritually. There's a, relationships have a spiritual component. That's a universal truth. There is a spiritual component to relationships. And God will use those relationships to grow your faith. And we can choose to go in the other direction. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, the Apostle Paul said this, don't be misled, bad company corrupts good character. In other words, a relationship can have a negative spiritual impact on your life. You hang out with bad dudes and bad dudettes, and you're going to end up going to bad places. It's going to, make, it's going to cause you to drift further from God, or in some cases, run headlong away from him. And we've all seen this. We've all seen this. We've all seen the high school kid who starts hanging out with the rough crowd and ends up in things and in places that they didn't want to go. And oftentimes leads to really, really hopeless or um, really sad situations. But the same thing happens to adults. Same thing happens to adults. I know three different people three women specifically, who um, after the kids were grown up to an age that they were kind of self-sufficient, decided that they wanted to go back to school and get their degrees. And um, this is over probably the last five to seven years. Um, went back to get their degrees, made some new friends at college, which is great, all four making friends, all four going back to college. But the friends that they made were, were kind of the men hating, you know, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle kind of women. Um, and, and over time, as they started hanging out with that crowd, their, their relationship with their husbands began to, to plummet. And eventually all three of them ended. Because who we hang out with influences where we end up. All right? This is, this is so, so very important. And and it, and it is for the good, and it is for the bad. And this is why we are constantly trying to get you into relational environments. This is why we are constantly promoting uh, grow groups and trying to get you out of rows and into circles with a small group of people that you can actually get to know and spend some time with. And we can't create providential relationships. We can't make those happen, but we can certainly create the, the potential for them. We can get you environments in environments where you can meet and get to know other Christian people and you can grow together and maybe develop some long-term friendships that will lead your life in the right direction. And that's why we find that groups are so very important. And we're, we just happen to be kicking off a semester of groups this week. This is a perfectly timed message. Amazing the way that happens. And so I want to encourage you. You've got grow group catalogs uh, on this campus, on your seats. You probably got one on the way in up at the Highlands. Uh, and so open it up. Find a grow group that fits your schedule or fits your station of life. If you're a college or college and career age person, 18 to 35, I'm starting a grow group this Thursday night here at at the Wheeling campus at 6.30, come on down for that. But there's different stations of life, different interests, different times of the week. Pick which one applies to you. Write the group number down on the, on the Connect card where it says, assign me up for group, grow group number, and we'll get you signed up and show up and get in a group and make some friends. And I can't promise you that you're going to find your best friend in the grow group, but I can promise you that you'll find a group of people who are growing together in the right direction, and you might just might find a providential relationship. For those of you dealing with grief, Grief Share is going on right now, and and that is an amazing group of, of people to gather together who are walking through processing the loss of a loved one and encouraging one another to stay engaged and to walk through the process and not get stuck. And that's just so powerful. I encourage you, if that's what you're dealing with, to get involved with that. And if you have a teenager 
180 student ministry meets on Sunday evenings. We're trying to get your students out of rows and into groups and into circles so that they can get to know one another and they can get to know a leader like Tim was in my life who invested in me and and knew me and cared about me and encouraged me in the right direction. And it's so important that your your teens have those people and we're working to set up those, those opportunities for them. And by the time, and it, you know, and get them involved now. Get them involved now. And you're like, wow, my kid's fine. Well, by the time you realize your kid needs that, it's going to be too late. So get them involved now. They need those people in their lives from the get-go. But here's, here's the reality, guys. We have a choice. You have a choice in relationships. You have a part to play in your spiritual growth. You can't create out of thin air providential relationships, but you can keep your eyes open and you can get into environments where they can happen and you can say yes when those opportunities present themselves. And it's not about a program and it's not about the Bible study. It's about setting up the opportunity for relationships that God will use to grow your faith. And when God grows our faith, Our perspective changes, the way we approach life changes, the way we navigate difficulties change, the way we go through good times changes. Our lives get better and our relationship with God gets sweeter and it's what we are looking for and it's what God desires more than anything. God uses relationships to grow faith in him. Now, there is another side to this. And the other side to this is, are you willing? Are you willing to be that person in somebody else's life? Are you willing to be that that person in somebody else's life? There there are people in your life that you're concerned about. Maybe you pray for them. You certainly, you worry about them. You're like, well, I hope they're, they're okay. Let me ask you this. Why don't you get involved in their lives? For the same reason that, that I, I don't. It's, it, it's called nunya, nun, nunya business. It's none of our, that's what we say to ourselves. It's none of my business what's going on in, in their lives. I don't want to stick my nose where it doesn't belong. But guys, providential relationships often start around awkward conversations or awkward moments. Providential con- relationships often start in an awkward way. They often will start like this. I know it's none of my business, but I really care about you. And I notice that you, under your makeup, you've got a black eye. I, I, I know it's none of my business, but I really care about you. And I, I, I can just tell that you're struggling, I don't know, with depression or, or whatever else. Is there, can I listen? Is there something I can do for you? I know it's none of my business, and you can fill in the blank, but... I care. And yes, you can be rejected in the midst of that. But more often than not, if people sense that you genuinely care, they're going to engage with you. They're just glad somebody cares. And those awkward moments turn into providential relationships, and you get to speak into somebody's life and help grow their faith. Now, I'm not talking about being a busybody or a nib. (sighs) Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about genuinely caring for people. Are you willing to be that person in somebody else's life? Are you willing to to step outside your comfort zone and invite somebody to church? An invitation to church can change somebody's eternity. Are you willing to be that person? Are you willing to ask for the fifth time, the sixth time? Might be awkward, but it makes a difference. Never forget, a good friend of mine passed away a few years ago. His name was Rod, and um, Rod's about my age. And, uh, and Rod invited everybody he knew to church. There were, there were weekends where Rod would sit in a row at the Wheeling campus, and there would be two rows of people that he brought to church. His, he brought his ex-wife, he brought his kids, he brought his mom, he brought every relative, he had his his coworkers and the people who worked for him, he invited everybody he knew to church, and he never stopped inviting until they came, and they came. 
And it changed their lives, and many of them are still here to this very day, and I run into to many of them around town, and Rod had an impact on eternity because he was willing to step outside his comfort zone and be that person for somebody else. Are you willing to? Some of us need to get more intentional in our relationships. Some of us need to get into a grow group and make some friends that will steer our life in the right direction and cause our faith to grow. Some of us need to step outside our comfort zone and invite people to church. Might be awkward, but keep going. Some of us might need to, to step in and begin to, to, maybe you in the past have led a grow group or an alpha group and you need to step in and lead a starting point group next time or a, a grow group next time grow groups come around and create an environment where people are, can can engage and begin to build those providential relationships. And maybe just maybe there's an awkward conversation you need to have. Somebody you need to go and speak to and just say, I know it's none of my business, but I care. And start the conversation and start listening. I heard one one youth program uh, share at one point, as they're teaching high school students, they teach them like, I don't know, seven things, but one of the things they teach them is this, your friends determine the direction and the quality of your life. Your friends determine the direction and the quality of your life. And that's not just true for teenagers, that's true for you, and that's true for me. But I would add to that, I would say, your friends also determine the depth and the quality of your relationship with God. When God uses people to grow our faith, we say it around here, we say it this way, all people need people. All people need people, including you. So, let me ask you this. How do you leverage this principle? How are you going to leverage this principle? Are you going to invest in new relationships? Are you going to put your, yourself out there to someone who needs what you have? Because God wants to grow a great big faith in you. Because a great big faith means a great big trust, and great big trust means a really healthy relationship with your heavenly Father. God wants to grow your faith, and he wants to use you to grow other people's faith. But guys, we have a choice. We have a part to play in this. And as our society grows more and more isolated, we have to choose to engage for our sake and for the sake of the people around me. You know, when, someday when you get to heaven, my hope is, and my prayer is that you'll hear, you'll have people saying, I'm so glad you made your business or my business your business. I'm so glad you invited me to church for the 10th time because it was the 10th time that I said yes and I found Jesus and it changed my life and my family and my eternity. I'm so glad you put yourself out there and had that awkward moment because I needed somebody to talk to and it changed everything for me. I'm so glad that our lives intersected because it was at the intersection of our lives that my life went in a different direction and my faith began to grow. And my prayer is that someday on the other side that you will have those conversations and you will have made that difference and that you will have people who have made that difference for you as well because God uses our relationships to grow our faith. And he wants to use your relationships to grow your faith and to grow the faith of the people he gives you. Let's pray. Lord, thanks for, uh, thanks for making us to be connected. Thanks for making us to be in relationships. Lord, I pray for those of us that are struggling in toxic relationships or relationships that are undermining our faith. Would you, would you just give us the courage to, uh, to walk away when we need to walk away and to draw boundaries where we need to draw boundaries. 
And God, I pray for each and every person here and at the Highlands and online. Lord, would you, would you provide for us? Would you set up for us those providential relationships that will grow our faith? And would you give us the eyes to see the relationships that you have set out before us to engage in, that we could be that for somebody else. And Lord, would you move in us? Would you move through us? Would you grow our faith? Would you change our lives? In Jesus' name, amen.